I was six years old. Quick story. I've said this here before years ago, but this will be a quick one. I was six years old when I got my first dollar ever in my life. I never had a dollar in my life. And I had my first dollar. I was going to my little dad's church, and there was an evangelist there who drove up in a Lincoln Continental with spinner hug cows. <laughs> White Lincoln Continental. And he had a nice suit on. We were, we were poorer than dirt. You know, like, my gosh. You know, and, and, but he, and he's there, and he preached on giving it shall be given unto you, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. God shall give to you a hundredfold return. I never heard that in my life. I'm mean, from Arkansas, but I'm not stupid. One times 100 is more than I had. Because <laughs> all I'd ever heard in church was, you know, if you don't quit wearing mini skirts and letting your hair grow long and playing rock and roll music and watching TV, you're going straight to hell, and your eyeballs are going to roll out on the floor of hell, and your tongue's going to get seared by the licking flames of hell. <laughs> medium rare I'd never heard anybody say that I had this dollar in my pocket that I got from my grandma who gave it to me for going and buy her a tin of snuff so it was contraband money <laughs> but you know what I'd bless this sanctified it and so I had it in my pocket and I, and I had already thought about I'm going to buy an airplane I'm going to buy a, a car I'm going to buy I had it spent a thousand different ways the Lord began to deal with me at six years old to give my dollar to him and I said, Lord, I'd give it to you, but not to, not to, the, not to the big fat preacher. <laughs> he weighed about 300 pounds. He's just got this big Cadillac. I'm thinking, like, he don't need my dollar. And I, I started walking home and stopped and turned around and walked all the way back and got on my little knees and put that dollar in the offering plate. And he said I would get a hundredfold return back. So I'm thinking by the time I get home, <laughs> I got a hundred dollars. I, I got to camp here just for a minute. I'll shorten some of this stuff. So, so I'm so the next. So I, I woke up. Literally woke up the next morning. Look under my pillow. Because we're Pentecostal, we believe that you know there's extraordinary things happen. You know the tooth fairy could be saved. <laughs> eye for an eye, tooth for tooth. You know, it's scriptural. <laughs> and it wasn't there. And then I looked on the ground. It wasn't there. One month goes by. Two months goes by. One year goes by. Two years goes by. Five years goes by. I'm ten years old. Now I'm jaded. Now I'm like. Jesus, Jesus took my dollar <laughs> and gave it to a fat, white preacher with a Cadillac whose belly looked like a chicken graveyard. <laughs> All right. That's what we call a preacher's belly in Arkansas, chicken graveyard. And then... I'm in the rock world for a while. I forget about it. I come back into the church in, early, uh, in my early 20s, begin as an associate pastor. Uh, at that time, Kenneth Copeland's coming to church. Uh, 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 you know, uh, Kenneth Copeland, uh, uh, Charles Capps, uh, Jerry Savelle, you know, they were all our friends. Uh, you know, I was taking them fishing with Danny on it, but I didn't like them because they're the guys that represented the God that took my dollar from me. I actually said to Kenneth Copeland on one of our fishing trips, because he said, bless God, hallelujah, the angel of the Lord goes before me, repairs the mouth of these fish, and I confess the name of Jesus, catch two times more fish than you do, boy. <laughs> I go, God, I love everybody but him. <laughs> and I said, Kenneth, what do you think about balance? Wouldn't balance be? He goes, bless God, son, balance is another word for compromise. <laughs> okay. I love him now. I mean, you know, of course, I, of course, he was flying in on a plane. I was driving a Pinto station wagon. But, you know, it's like, you know, that somehow we don't get that, you know. <laughs> so I'm jaded. I didn't like the Word of Faith movement. Not because Kenneth Cole preached the greatest message ever heard in 1976 in our church called the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And we were friends. And I loved it. I did, his kids came to the camp that we had there. Jerry Savelle was my best friend. Bless God, you ugly thing, you. And uh, Charles Capps, I caught for him all the time. And, you know, he had his crew cut and owned the Oldsmobile place. I think he gave me a car once. I mean, it was all great and good and all that. But still, they're the guys that are preaching the gospel that took my dollar when I was a kid and I needed so so. <laughs> So now I'm 25, now I'm 30, Pastor Nature. Now I'm doing tender ministry, I'm 35, now I'm 40. And now I'm 45, I'm in California, and I'm doing really good. I don't need that dollar. <laughs> Jerry and Laura were working with me at the time. Jerry will remember this. I don't remember what year it was. Jerry, 88, 91, 92, 95, somewhere around there. 
just a great year financially and everything. Come in the office, Jerry goes, look at this. What? And it's a $50,000 check from unknown source. I go, my God. I thought it said 5000 because, you know, that's Arkansas perception. <laughs> so somebody made a mistake telling them that there's an extra zero here. But so anyway, I remember Jerry going, well, she just give it all away. I said, shut up, Jerry. <laughs> give it all away. No, no, honestly. So I took this thing. This is the best year financially. I think it's the best year of my life. To this day, the best year. It was just over and above. the money that came. It was just like, oh, my God, you're so wonderful. And I sat on the bed, and I'm holding this $50,000 check from a trust fund in New England that I never, that don't know who they were, don't know, just sent me $50,000. They couldn't find me. By the way, I had no PR, you know. I still hate eight tracks or something, and, and, and uh you know, I had nothing. They had to call all over the nation. Finally got Rick Joyner to send me the 50. I said, when God wants to bless you, he'll find you. So I'm sitting there looking at the check, and I'm saying, Lord, I don't understand. What is this? And he said, son, this is a return on the dollar. I said, the dollar? He goes, yeah. I just out of my memory. <laughs> he said, the dollar. He said, remember the dollar? He said, this is... The dollar with kingdom interest on it. Well, as you don't understand, planting and reaping is not instantaneous. I'm a farmer. I said, I said, Lord, it's been, it's been 40 years. He said, yeah, and it's $50,000 too. <laughs> you have a point. <laughs> no, and, and, and this, is, this is what wrecked my world. To this day, I'm trying to do this. And I said, Lord, and tears are running down my face. I said, thank you. Because I've been really not happy with that, that dollar snatch thing. It's like, it's taken you nearly 40 years to put, you know. And I said, remember when I was in Arkansas hunting squirrels to feed my kids and pastor this little church or tenor it? And I was getting $10.20. I, I remember going to, to have to go to get gas to go do an tenor ministry in Mississippi somewhere. I was so Coke bottles to get the money back to put gas in my Volkswagen. Yes, it was a Volkswagen. And uh, I said, Lord, why did you give it to me then when I needed it? I really hurting. My kids were hurting. And the Lord said, because I wanted to teach you a valuable lesson that I want you to live. I said, well, he said, I'm not moved by need. He says, I want to learn. I want to teach you something about uh, honor. He said, I'm a God of honor. He said, if I had given that to you when you needed it, you would only see me as a God that come to your rescue in times of need. He said, I waited till you didn't need it and you didn't have to have it because I wanted to honor you. Wow. Wow. Really? He said, yes. He said, I honor you, son. I love you. I want to give you when you don't. I mean, he said, he said to me, it's hurt me to wait this long to watch you suffer, but I wanted to teach you this lesson. 